You guys, I think I've got the cutest fall tutorial for you ever. Now, it's really quite a funny little project, but I'm just so thrilled with how it turned out. I want to show you how to make a lattice pie pot holder or trivet. Now, I keep referring to it as a pot holder, but I think it would be absolutely adorable on your table for Thanksgiving with a pumpkin pie on top or whatever pie you like. Let me show you how to make one. For this project, you're going to need two pieces of fabric, and I'll explain to you exactly how to work out what size you need in just a minute. I'm using 12 inches by 12 inches squared. I've got a nice pattern piece for the front of my pie, and the back piece is cream, because I think that looks the cutest. It kind of looks like crust. Then I'm using some Insel Bright, which is going to go in between. Now, a lot of people have left comments saying that whenever you use Insel Bright, you should also use a layer of regular batting as well because it gives you extra protection. So I think if you've got some, that's what you should do. I don't actually have any regular batting at the moment, so I'm just going to stick with how I usually do it. But those are just some comments I've been getting that it works much better with the two layers. You're going to need some jumbo rickrack, and you're going to need a couple of packets of bias tape, because we need just over three and a half yards, and a, and a packet is usually only about three yards. To get our perfect circle shape, you're going to need a plate to trace around. So find a plate that you're happy with the size. Our pot holder will work out to be almost exactly the same size as the plate. We're not turning it right size out and losing some of our fabric, so it will actually stay exactly the same size. Then what you need to do is take a tape measure and measure across the diameter. This one here is 10 and a half inches, and then we're going to add on an inch and a half. So that means for me, I've cut my fabric at 12 inches by 12 inches squared and also my batting remembering i'm just using insole bright batting but you might also want to use a layer of regular batting as well so now what we're going to do is layer our fabrics so i'm going to have the fabric that i'd like to be the bottom of my pie at the bottom with the wrong side facing me mine's just cream so there's not a right or wrong side then i'm going to put my insole bright batting on and then I'm going to put my pie fabric, well, the fabric that I'd like to be in my pie on the top with the right sides facing me. So we've got a nice little sandwich there, kind of like we're sandwiching a quilt. So I've got all my edges lined up really nicely. Then what I'm going to do is take my plate and pop it right in the center. So I've got about the same space on all four sides, all these edges here that come close to the edge of our fabric. Then I'm going to take a washable fabric marker. It doesn't really matter what you use because we won't see it. And I'm just going to trace around the entire edge of my plate. Okay. There we go. That looks great. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure it is still all smoothed out really nicely. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to flip it over and check that the back is all nicely smoothed out. And it is. I'll flip it back over. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some pins. And I'm just going to pin it in place. Because what we're going to do now is sew around the edge of our circle. Not on the circle, but a about a quarter of an inch around the edge of it just to keep all the layers in place. So we want to make sure it's all still nicely laid out, nice and smooth. These layers don't need to be perfect, but it does need to be smooth. So when I say these layers don't mean to need to be perfect, I mean this bottom one's peeking out a bit here, but so long as it's um, within our circle on the back there, that's going to be fine. So just pop in as many pins as you'd like, just to make sure it's staying where it's meant to be. If you'd like to, and if you're a quilter, you might want to use your basting pins so they don't, the pins don't stab you when you're trying to sew it. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. Now what I'm going to do is sew around this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. I did pop in a few extra pins just to help keep it in place. And if you've got basting spray, that would be another option just to make sure our three layers stay in place. So now what I'm going to do is just stitch around the outside edge with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm not worrying about a back stitch and I've put my stitch length all the way up to my maximum of six. 
removing any pins if they're getting in your way. It's kind of looking a bit bunched up there, so I'm going to pull that one out and smooth it out. Now these, the stitching around the edge doesn't have to be perfect. It's literally just holding our three layers in place. Coming back to where we started, cutting with thread and then removing all the pins. So for the bias tape we need extra wide double fold and for all the supplies I've got them over on my website I'll put a link in the description below. Now I have given it a press because it sits much nicer and is easy to work with when it is pressed. We need to have four columns with our bias tape going across so what I'm going to do is just do my best guess. We want about the same space in between them I'm just going to guess and then we're going to come along and measure it so that it's approximately the same. So just doing our best guess at this point and we just want to cut it so it's past the stitches at the top and the bottom. Okay and then what I like to do is make sure that the bias is all facing the same way. For example the fold is on this side. So I'll just make sure the fold is on the left side for all of them. It just again means it will sit nicer and consistently. Then there's also a shorter edge. So I can see that the shorter edge is on this side. You can see, I don't know if you can see there, that the back is kind of popping through to the front. So I'm actually just going to turn that around so that the longer side is on the top. And I'll check that for all of them. Sometimes it's hard to see doesn't really make too much of a difference on some pieces but on some pieces it's really obvious so that is correct okay I probably just should have checked it was up the right way before I cut it so now what I'm going to do is take my ruler sorry one more thing if you're using directional fabric it's at this point you'd make sure it's sitting how you'd want it to sit with your lattice on top so I know for my size if I measure one inch and three quarters from the stitches that's there and then if I measure it again that's going to get them all pretty even so now I'm going to place that one inch and three quarters on the edge of my bias and measure okay so that's about right now I'm going to pin it in place and if you'd like you can just check it again before you pin it. I mean it doesn't have to be perfect but it does also help keep it nice and straight so you can butt that up against it remembering to make sure it just comes past those stitch lines. And I'm just trying to pin it so that it's staying really nice and flat because that's how it will be sewn down so that one's looking really good then I'm going to come across again and find my one inch and three quarters butt it up against it and pin now this is the measurement for my plate so you would just do your best guess at what measurement is going to work and do that And the whole reason I didn't pin it the first time I went around was just to check that I did in fact have the right measurement. It looks like it's bending a bit there. It is tricky to get it to sit flat and pin it. The pins kind of tend to want to push it out of shape a bit. And at this point if you had some of that special double sided sewing tape that would be really handy. You could just stick these down that would be this would be the perfect project for some of that tape. Okay and then I'm just going to carry on for the remaining pieces. So now I'm going to stitch along both sides. I've got my stitch length set at three which is nice and long and decorative. I've got my left compensating foot on which is a jukey foot that you can get. And what it has is a ledge here that I can butt my bias binding up against and I'll get perfect stitches all the way down. If you don't have one then you just stitch at about one eighth of an inch seam allowance from the edge on both sides. We're not going to worry about a back stitch. 
oh I forgot to say I'm starting on the side that's folded over I find you'll get a much nicer tidier finish if you sew down those those double-sided edges first and then do the folded edge on the other side second remove your pins as you need to I just gave it a quick press so it's sitting really nice and flat and then I'm going to do exactly the same with my bias binding coming down this way. So I'll take my first piece, I've already pre them, I'll measure again but this time I'll also find a line on my ruler and line it up with my bias binding to make sure that it's on the 90 degree angle, angle meaning that it's nice and straight. So I'll just carry on going across this way now doing exactly the same pinning, measuring and then sewing it on. And now what I'm going to do is take my fabric scissors and cut around the edge that I drew with my washable marker at the very beginning. So I'll just take my time and follow that line. Okay, there we go. You can start seeing the pie coming to shape now. Now we did cut over our stitches. Don't worry. What we're going to do now is attach our binding to close it all in. So I've just got more binding now and I'm just going to place it around loosely to measure how much I need. And then we want to come and have a little bit extra, about five inches extra. So I'm going to cut it at about there. So this is probably about 40 inches if you were measuring it, but depending on your size, you're going to need a different length. So just do it like that and then let's give it a quick press and I'll see you at the sewing machine. So now we need to work out where we want to be the top for our little loop and I think it looks nicer on the diagonal to have that at the top rather than these coming across and up and down. So I'm just going to turn mine to the side there and right here is where I want my top to be. So what I'm going to do is take my binding, sorry my bias tape which I'm going to use as binding, we're going to open it up and then we're going to sandwich it so that we've got our pie in between the bias tape there just like that and where I want my top to be I'm just starting a little bit before it because if that's the very dead center top I've just started maybe half an inch before that and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly sew this on and go all around the edge ever so slowly if you're uncomfortable doing this you could pin it in place before you sew it I find it just works just as well not pinning but do whatever you're most comfortable with I'm still stitching at stitch length three and I'm still using my left compensating foot. Again, if you don't have one, then just stitch very close to the edge about, well, using about a one eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just making sure it's nicely sandwiched in there. Just a few inches ahead of where I'm sewing and then I'll just keep fixing it as I go. So then I'll stop, make sure it's nicely sandwiched and I can see the edge really pushing up against the fold there. And I'll come around a bit and then I'll check it again, opening it up, pushing it in and just take your time with this, it's not a race. Following around on that edge. Oh, it can be a little bit fiddly. Okay, so I'm coming back up to where I started 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place the binding right over where we started. And then I'm going to carry on stitching until I get right to where I want to be my top part. And then I'm going to pull my binding away and then stitch along my binding, sewing it closed. So it doesn't have to be exact. We just want to go right back past where we started. And now I'm coming up to where I want to be my top. I'll just do a few stitches. Now I'm going to just gently pull it to the side and then follow that line right off my little pie here. Sewing along the whole length to close it. Just coming right off the edge and then cutting my thread. Okay, so now we've enclosed it. It's looking really nice and tidy. Let's sew our rick rack on and then we'll address this last little bit at the very end. Now we're going to attach our jumbo rick rack. Now I'm using the one from Hobby Lobby, which really is jumbo. I was really happy with how big it is. Uh, this one here you can see is right, and I got that one from Joanne, and that's also jumbo rick rack. But I'd say it's about half the size, so just be careful of that. I mean, I'm sure it would be just as cute, but I think this jumbo one is absolutely perfect. So just like before, I'm not going to pin it on, and we also have a lot of layers, so it is getting a bit harder. You could clip it now, I'm thinking. Clipping it would probably help. But it is pretty easy just to place it in position and sew it around, and I'll show you how just now. So making sure you've got enough rick rack to go all the way around, I'm actually just using the last little piece from my spool from my samples that I made. And I just left it on the spool and sewed it and cut it exactly where I needed to so there was no wastage. Now what we're going to do is place it right on the top here, right where we want our top to be. And then we're going to sew it on. And to make sure it's in the middle, I'm just making sure that I'm placing it right on top of my bias binding. And I can see the binding peeking through a little bit at the top there and at the bottom there. So I'm just going to check that it's about that much at the top and at the bottom when I sew it all the way around. So just starting at the beginning there. Now I'm just using my regular foot and I only have a straight stitch because Juki's, the TL series, only do a straight stitch. But I would do a zigzag now if I had one on my sewing machine. I'm still stitching at stitch length three and I'm not going to worry about a back stitch because we're going to come right over the top. And I'm just aiming down the center there. It's a, the zigzag, so I'm just aiming right down that center. And if you're not confident doing this, I, I really think that clips would be your best bet to just keep it all in place as you're sewing around. Okay, so we're just coming right up to where we started. I'll just come a little bit past that and then I'll do a back stitch and then go forward again and then cut my thread. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to cut that excess off. So we're from just past where I stopped stitching, I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to cut that thread as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the leftover bias binding that we've just got hanging here and I'm going to fold it over and then work out how long I'd like my loop to be and I think that looks about right you can have yours as long as you want um, if you wanted it even longer you would have made this little bit extra long when we did that step and then I'm just going to fold it in half this bottom bit just fold it over and pop it on top and check that I'm happy with it and it's sitting right in the center with there where I wanted it to be and it's hiding all the rick a -rack working as well so when you're happy you could pin that or clip that in place but I'm just going to hold it pop it under and stitch right over the top keeping it in place I'm going through quite a few layers so you might want to stitch slowly then I'll do a back stitch and I'll just do that a couple more times so it's nice and secure 
cut my threads and there we have it we've got our cute little oh let me cut that thread sorry there we have it our cute little lattice pie pot holder now i did give it another press this is another one that i made with larger strawberries isn't it super cute you can find all sorts of fabric that would work really well for this i know some people use really realistic fabric with like cherries and pumpkins and what have you and they look really neat if you've enjoyed this video please hit the like button it really helps me out and if you're looking for another fall project i'll put a link up above and you can check out my cute little pumpkin coaster thanks so much and i'll see you in the next video